Many of you guys spend hours and hours poring over the specs of one of these little tractors, either this or the BX or the 2025R. And one of the areas we see most often questioned is the lift capacity of the tractor. The specs are a little bit confusing and they're just that specs. So let's take some time today and explain how the specs are measured and then let's do some real world lift capacity tests. If you look closely at most of the specs, they talk about the loader hinge pin. Well, that's this pin right here where the bucket curl and dump hinges. So when they talk about the lift height at the pin, that's what they're talking about. When they talk about the lift capacity at the pin, that's the pin they're talking about. Now, that's theoretical, right? Because you can't carry anything that far back. You actually have to carry your items up here. So they have a second measurement that, at least in the deer literature, refers to 500 millimeters in front of the pin. 500 millimeters is about 19 and a half or 20 inches. So that would be, you know, about out here. Now that may be a little bit too far out for some load testing, and it may not. I mean, that, that's what makes these specifications difficult, is they don't necessarily directly apply to your needs. And that's what we're going to get into in this video. Another thing you'll see is they talk about different heights. They will talk about with it at max height, and they will talk about the hinge being at 59 inches. Let's see where our hinge is here now. Our hinge is just shy of 59 inches, maybe 58 and 3 quarters. Okay, we just raised the loader to its max height. Let's see what that pin height is at, at this level. It's showing maybe 70 and a quarter, 70 and 3 eighths. There could be a lot of variety in this. I don't really know if my concrete pad here is level. There's air pressure differences. I think this is rated to be between 71 and 72 inches on the 120R loader. So I'm not seeing this quite as high as it's the spec, um, but that's nothing to be concerned about. I just kind of wanted to get a baseline of, of what the max pin height was. Once we start putting items in the bucket, the tires may squat a little bit. For other reasons, the, the max pin height may decline just slightly. I'm going to start by putting eight of these 70 pound weights in. Look at that. Hey man. Rah! Remember, Christy, I told you that if we got a tractor, I'd not have to lift anything anymore. Right. Maybe the, some of the reasons that I said for getting a tractor weren't entirely correct. Uh-huh. You do have a nice little crate there for your weights, though. Yeah, how do you like this? I put it on rollers. I don't think I've ever shown this on a video. Okay, I tried to just put these weights in here kind of as far back as they'll sit, trying to be fair. It will make a lot of difference. If you think about how much leverage there is, it would make a lot of difference if those weights were six inches further forward. Let's see if we can lift this uh, 560 pounds all the way to max height. There's an illustration right there of the difference of hydraulic pressure at idle versus max throttle. You could see that it lifted it significantly more. Maybe we should measure that. Now the most important measurement for the actual lift capacity of the tractor is the hydraulic pressure. So I got this pressure gauge from boltonhooks.com. Look, it says so right on the back. So I've unhooked the lift hoses and I'm going to plug in the pressure gauge right here in the top one. It doesn't matter which one, if you plug it in the top one, You'll have to lift to cause the pressure. If you plug into the bottom one, you'll have to lower to cause the pressure. So let's see what kind of pressure we have. I'll start the tractor. I'll speed it up to wide open throttle. And then I'll attempt to lift and we'll see what we can get the gauge to. You'll see that the, the ticks on the gauge are in 100 PSI increments. Now there's oil in this gauge. I'd like to get the air bubble out of the way so it's easier for you to see. Okay, so that was a wide open throttle. Let me show it at idle.
So you'll see it's about 1900 at idle and 2000 or maybe 2100 at certain times at full throttle. So a lot of people tell me that the pressure relief valve is constant, but our tests here show differently. There is a little bit more pressure at wide open throttle. Also, doing it repeatedly, hitting the up repeatedly, seems to increase the pressure slightly. So rather than holding it steady when you're trying to do a heavy load, giving it two or three pulls can really help you. So as you can see, this 1025R is pretty much right on and has the factory specified hydraulic pressure. Let's get started with the rest of our test. So we got that 560 pounds lifted 64 and three quarters. We could not get it to max height. Now, does this match or mismatch the specs? Let's see. Christy, to be highly scientific here today, let's use our trusty bathroom scale yeah, to weigh some of these uh... weights. That's very scientific. I'm you, sure they're very accurate. Do you think this is ISO 9001 certified? Uh, maybe. Let's say it's Tractor Time with Tim certified. Okay, close good, enough. Good enough for us. Yeah. Okay, so our small weights weigh 41 pounds. Our large weights weigh 71 pounds. That's just gonna make our math more confusing. Yeah. It's supposed to lift 520 pounds 500 millimeters ahead of the pivot. Now with my trusty calculator, that said about 20 inches, almost 20 inches. 20 inches ahead of the pivot would be here. So our weight is actually closer to the pivot than that. I couldn't tell for sure if that was all the way up or not. 69, so that is seven of the 71 pounders, seven sevens 49, and another seven, 497 pounds. I'm afraid we may not get to 520. Okay, so this is seven of the 71s and 141, 64 and a quarter. So 538 pounds total in the bucket, and we are not able to lift it to full heights. So we're able to lift it to about 64 inches. I don't have a 20 pound weight. How am I gonna test that? Well, let's see, maybe I could, I bet I could get close if I take out two of the. Two of the 70s and use the 41s. Okay, if we've calculated right, we've got 519 pounds in it right now. We had five of the 71 pound weights and four of the 41 pound weights, and we got it to 67 inches. So we're two inches from max height with 519 pounds. So with our testing so far, we cannot quite achieve the rated lift capacity. We'll probably be off by just five pounds or so. I wanna test how much we can get to 59 inches. How much did you put in there that time? Eight 71 pounders and one 41 pounder. I want to see how high we can get that. Looking for that magical 59 inch measurement. I'm not sure why that's magical, but they all rate them that way. I 
I did notice that by curling back, I could lift it just a little bit higher. And that makes sense because the weight is getting closer to the pin. By no means are we trying to do a scientific test here. You know, we're joking about that when we get the uh, bathroom scale out. But we're just trying to give you some idea of what you can really expect from this thing. That's 59 and a half. So 608 pounds at 59 and a half inches. Let's see how much we can get off the ground. Just off the ground, say four inches off the ground, just enough to move it. Okay, folks, if my calculations are right, this is 1,142 pounds, at least in the ballpark there. Eight of the 71 pound weights, 14 of the 41 pound weights. And actually I've got some John Deere ones in there that weighed 42, so 1,142 pounds, maybe 1,145, maybe 1,140, maybe 1,150, you know what I'm saying. Let's see if we can lift that. Let's see how high we can lift it. And then let me show you a couple of tricks to kind of give yourself just a few more pounds of lift capacity. Okay, we've got this 1142 pounds, eight inches off the ground. Now that's not very high. You're never going to dump that in a truck. But for a lot of things that I do, that's exactly what I need, just to get something off the ground to be able to move it. Now I wouldn't recommend going the full speed with your tractor when you've got this much weight on the loader. Go very, very slowly. Just barely move. When you're using the absolute maximum potential of your machine, you've got to be very careful. Go very slow. Try not to hit any bumps. And if you do hit them, hit them very gently so the tractor doesn't get to bouncing. But having said that, eight inches off the ground is probably all we need for a lot of things. This is what makes rating the lift capacity very difficult on a tractor. It's all about what you're trying to lift and what you're trying to do with it. So when someone says this tractor will only lift 500 pounds, well, that's true at the upper limit. But what if you only need to just move something? Somebody else comes along and says, hey, it'll lift 1150 pounds. I saw it on TTWT. Well, that's true. We're doing it right here. It all depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Christy, I'm out of ballast and I need some extra help, so I'm going to have to involve you in this portion of the... Yeah. So the first thing you need to do is announce your weight to everyone on the camera so we can get a, an accurate test. Well, it's something women don't tell. Oh. And I don't know. I've got, uh, you know, coveralls on and all stuff. Probably 100 stuff. pounds of clothes, right? Yeah, exactly. So let's just say that we had the 1140 or 50 pounds we're somewhere less than 1,350 pounds. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Have you had more cheeseburgers than I thought? I had one for lunch. Yeah, it was a good one too. Hey, I'm gonna show you here a trick on how to pick up something that can't be picked up. So watch closely. It's it's not you, it's the 1,150 oh, plus okay. you. You see, okay. it's, it's all okay. together. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's what you're insinuating. I'm afraid this segment's going to get me in more trouble than even buying a new tractor. Yeah, maybe. Okay, the first thing is, we couldn't pick it up. Well, I, I might actually, I did pick it up. A little bit. We are off the ground. Amazing. But that's as far as it would pick it up. But let me show you a little trick. I'm going to curl the bucket down against the ground, then I can pick up the partial weight, and then I'll be able to curl it back up. You watch, it works. See, I got wow. you eight inches off the ground, and I couldn't lift it. Yeah. I think it actually lifted higher that time. Yeah. Probably a little less than 1,300 pounds picked up <laughs> with a stock 1025R. So we've shown the tractor will lift 1,300 pounds. That's amazing, isn't it? Now, before you go out and say, hey, I'm going to buy that 1025R because I saw on TTWT that it'll lift 1,300 pounds. Let's think this through. 
we lifted it here parked on the concrete. We did not move. Uh, I don't even know what air pressure is in these tires, but we squatted them significantly. If you start moving with this type of a load, you put a lot of pressure on that front axle. This is why I'd recommend being very careful anytime you lift that type of a load with this tractor. Don't move it far and don't move it fast and don't do it very often. You can't expect this little tractor to lift that kind of weight day in, day out for years and years and years without some issues with your front axle, without requiring a lot of ballast in the rear end to keep the rear end down, maybe even more than the rated amounts uh, listed in your um, owner's manual. So I've shown you what you can do in a pinch, but I don't recommend this for everyday operation. I hope this has been helpful. Again, not incredibly scientific, but hopefully it does provide some color on the actual lift capacities of these subcompact tractors. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Now, it's off the ground. I even stuck my toe under it, I trusted it enough. Then Sally, you can have a fit if you want. I stuck my toe under there.